This month we told you we are clearing the shelters, trying to get homeless pets into forever homes. And we've also shared along the way how local shelters are so crowded and it has been forcing staff at these shelters to make hard decisions about which pets can stay and live and which ones get put down to make room for the flood of new animals coming in. Tonight, a charlatan asked our team to verify how that process works. In West Charlotte, two stray dogs have been hanging around Norman Phillips' home. They've got collars, but we've not been able to get close up to them to really see if they've got identification. He says he hasn't been successful in luring them in and wasn't sure the next step to take. Well, if we call um, you know, animal control, they're going to euthanize them. That's the first thing that pops up in our mind. He wanted to ask Charlotte Shelter. What is their role when they get a stray animal? You know, I know that euthanasia is, is part, of, part of their solution over there, but I don't think that that's probably the people that work there. That's not probably their first choice either. For this Verify Fact Check, we went to Melissa Nicely, Communications Director for CMPD Animal Care and Control and North Carolina Law. The animals just don't, get come, just don't come into the shelter and automatically be euthanized. Nicely says North Carolina Law outlines a period of time the shelter must hold a pet, allowing the owner time to reclaim it. That period is 72 hours. She says the only exception to that standard might be if the animal is in serious medical condition that that staff cannot address and the animal is suffering. That's really the only scenario where an animal is going to come in and right away be euthanized. Nicely says due to high kennel capacity right now, any animal lingering after its 72 hour hold and moving to the adoption floor can be considered at high risk for euthanasia. That said, she says staff tries to select the sickest and those feeling the mental toll of kennel life first. Behavior deterioration, it shows in the kennel presence. It shows it barking heavily at the front of the kennel, pacing, jumping, nipping. Once you get it out of the kennel, it may, it may start mouthing you know, at your hands or nipping at your pants. And just overall being a very high stress level. Now, Animal Care and Control says there are ways to help a lost pet without having to turn it in and, of course, subject it to that chaotic kennel environment and then take up a precious kennel space. The first step is to take it to a veterinarian or one of the county's microchip partners and see if the animal has a microchip and information to contact the owner directly. We have that information on our website, by the way. If you think you can temporarily care for the pet, report it to the shelter. CMPD has a form where you can upload details on the pet and its picture so anyone looking for it can find it. By the way, if you have the pet, are harboring it somehow, or feeding it, and you don't report it within 24 hours, you are violating a city ordinance.